Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Samurai 7 Retrospective. Today we're going to be looking at the 7th of the 7 Samurai. That of course is Kikuchio. Now Kikuchio is a unique character, with a lot of character in him. And like Katsushiro and Kanbei, it can be considered among the main cast of the series. He does a lot and says a lot more. So let's start with some context. Now Kikuchio is introduced in Episode 1, proclaiming himself to be a great and powerful samurai certainly carrying himself as one, although it is shown by Kanbei that this is something of a boisterous lie, and even Kiara doubts its worth. This doesn't deter Komachi though, who, seeing a big samurai, decides to go for it, and decides to recruit him. In turn, Kikuchio, feeling honored by someone finally acknowledging him as samurai, decides to go along with no real convincing. He gladly joins the team, and from this point on is glued to it. From here, he goes about with the group fighting, exploring, and recruiting in the city. Even after Kanbei joins, and specifically tells Kikuchio to leave as he isn't a real samurai, Kikuchio stays on, determined to prove himself. While separated during the city escape and presumed dead, he is in fact fine, and his durability becomes a theme throughout the series. He rejoins the group in the caves only to be captured by opposing forces, although he's quickly rescued and proceeds to the group with Kana. It is in Kana where Kikuchio has his most important character moment, however, as he talks to the villagers gathered before Monzo because of Monzo's betrayal. In this tense scene of division, Kikuchio galvanizes the group by telling them about himself and his background. As someone who is both samurai and farmer, he can understand both sides, but he convinces both sides of the need to work together for the greater good. In this speech, he reveals who he is as a person, as someone who is not a mechanical samurai, as someone who deeply wants to help the farmers simply for the sake of it. He wants to help everyone do the best that they can. He unites everyone and sets the stage for Kanbei to assume the role of a unified commander. In the actual defense of the village, Kikuchio proves to be quite a competent member of the team as well, and helps win the battles. Afterwards, having been left behind by Kanbei, Kikuchio convinces Katsushiro to join up with him to go after Kanbei and support him anyways. Uh, again, this quest inevitably proves to be a failure that doesn't accomplish much of anything, but Kikuchio is glad nonetheless that Kanbei is okay, and rejoins him for the final assault on the capital. In this assault, Kikuchio proves to be a skilled warrior, and his farmer background even proves helpful in literally sniffing out the real emperor. He does, however, take a beating, and unlike previous occasions, he does unfortunately not make it out alive. His final act is wielding a giant sword to literally bat the capital away from Kana Village, and thus save it. With Kikuchio's role examined, let's look at his character. With his introduction, Kikuchio initially comes off as a belligerent and arrogant man, who works solely for his glory and himself. No one really seems to take him too seriously, and it could be speculated that he only really accepts his task for recognition. He goes on to disprove these negative first impressions though, and to establish himself as a genuine team player. While it may seem he initially accepts the mission simply to chase glory, it doesn't seem to be this case at the end of the story, as it really seems that above all he simply wants the acceptance of those around him, and to help them as well. This need for acceptance, of course, is linked to his questionable samurai status. The idea that Kikuchio may not be a real samurai is cleverly hinted at from the beginning of the series, and established by the fact that he isn't fully human. This makes us a little weary of him, as the series has shown that the mechanical samurai are usually not the best people to hang around with. This leads us to suspect Kikuchio and his intentions when we first meet him. The writers cleverly subvert this, though, by showing us that our hunch isn't entirely untrue, as it is proven that he is not a true samurai. However, this isn't because he's a bandit or a bad man, but instead because he is a farmer seeking acceptance and to cement his new identity as a samurai. Of course, like any identity, acceptance and recognition are critical to it, and this also explains why Kikuchio is so eager to help. He wants to assert himself as a samurai to both himself and the community as a whole, and he wants to do this in order to overcome the obstacles of his past life and circumstances and help others do the same. He wants to use his new power so that those around him don't have to suffer having no power like he has in the past. He craves acceptance not to seek glory, but instead to sustain his iron will to help those around him. In Katsushiro's video, I mentioned how supporting others in a team requires one to be able to support themselves. A strong team is made up of the strong contributions of strong individuals. And I mention this because Kikuchio seems to understand that facet of life, and for this reason seeks to augment his own strength as much as possible. He seeks strength not only for himself, but for the collective as well, in order to strengthen the team by strengthening himself. Now this does of course feed into his personality and skills, and of course not completely positively. It does contribute to his initial arrogance and boisterousness as he seeks to compensate for his lack of true samurai background or training. And, uh, well, you know, he's definitely trying. He's uh, arguably succeeding to faking it until he makes it. Faking it has a price though, and in this case it is a sense of reckless abandon and the accumulation of unneeded damage to both himself and his pride. Sometimes he bites off more than he can chew, and it's obvious that he's not necessarily the most skilled 
or doesn't necessarily have any real training. Because faking it accentuates his lack of formal training, he instead knows his strength and decides to lean on that excessively. As he doesn't necessarily know how to use it the best though, falling back on brute force often sees him take a lot of damage. He knows he's strong and confident, or at least that he needs to come off as these things, and so tends to overrate both his competence and durability. This explains many of his clownish acts and why he kind of becomes a sort of comic relief character throughout the series. In addition, as a result, the physically strongest member of the team is not necessarily the best member of the team and is no stranger to getting manhandled or beaten back. None of this is to say that Kikuchio is a bad character, though. Instead, he is one which richly depicts the mind and heart of someone trying to rise above the circumstances of both their birth and look for acceptance in their new role that they have sought and made for themselves. His farmer background makes him uniquely relatable to the peasants he serves and allows him to serve as a sort of bridge between both them and the, quote, real samurai. I also find it fitting how he, a former peasant held down by the current system, is the one which lands the finishing blow on Yukio, the man currently at the head of the system and currently abusing it for personal gain. Kikuchio is a man of the people, and while he is a faker, he's also a team player and grateful to the team. While he does initially come off as arrogant and hostile, once he finds the acceptance he has always sought, he shows himself to be extremely dedicated to the mission and those around him. We see this as his relationships with his fellow samurai evolve. He initially looks down on Katsushiro, is hostile towards Kanbei, dismisses Kurobe, threatens Haihachi, and mistrusts Kuzio. Uh, Shichirochi is cool, I guess. But, as he fights alongside the team, he grows to trust and respect them, and soon begins to go out of his way to support and protect those around him, giving it his all, even the ultimate sacrifice. Kikuchio is an interesting character because he's simultaneously the most genuine and yet artificial of the samurai. It is fascinating how they juxtapose the genuine nature of his character and identity with the very artificial elements of his being and circumstances. On one hand, Kikuchio is a very genuine man. He wears his heart on his sleeve and always tries to do his best, even if he's not the most capable or subtle. He isn't bothered by his lack of capabilities, but instead decides to constantly work on them as he's aware of them, or at least seems to be sometimes. He never refrains from speaking his mind or interceding for others when he feels a need to. He is acutely aware of who he is, and while he grows friendlier over time to the group, he never fundamentally changes as a person. That's not to say he doesn't grow or develop, and this isn't an insult to his character, but instead to say that he is in touch with himself from the beginning of the plot. As a result, he can consistently be himself, and thus genuine in his ideals and actions to those around him. This genuine core, of course, juxtaposes his artificial exterior. On the surface level, almost everything about this guy is fake. He's not a real samurai, he's not always a real skilled fighter, and it can be argued he's not even a real dude. No. Instead, if we look at it from a factual point of view, it is fact that he's an artificial samurai living in an artificial body who exhibits fluctuating levels of skills throughout various fights with some results better than others. He is a great pretender, who no one claims that he is things he's not. He, in a sense, is living a lie. However, this doesn't change who he is at his core, or who he is as a person, and why he's a good man. In the end, while many of his artificial traits are superficial, his genuine traits run deep, and therefore define him and his soul as genuinely helpful. Sure, he may not be a quote, real man due to his robotic body, but he definitely has a real heart and a real soul. Sure, his skills are kind of inconsistent at times, but he can be really good in fights, and when needed, never runs away. And sure, he may not be a real samurai according to his birth and according to records, but he embodies the virtues that a real samurai should live by, and is thus accepted by the other samurai as one of their own. While he technically isn't a samurai, at the end, by living according to his own ideals and according to himself, and striving to be the best he can and help those around him, he has become samurai.